You're listening to The Ashley Lachlan Show. I'm Ashley, and I'm here to help you build a wildly successful and profitable business on social media. I created my own rags to riches story and built a seven figure business on social media in the midst of motherhood. And my passion is helping other female entrepreneurs do the same. I'm sharing my best marketing, mindset, and sales strategies to help you love the process and scale your business to six figures and beyond. Let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode four, 10 reasons why you're not making the cash money you're working your booty off for. This episode is for the ladies who are grinding nonstop, but just not seeing the cash flow they want. Because I know what it's like to work 60 hours a week on my business and then do the math and realize I'm working for 50 cents an hour. Like what? However, those times were at the beginning of my business journey when I was learning everything, doing everything, building up my social accounts, building my authority, creating my systems, developing my courses, learning how to create graphics, learning how to sell. And that's normal. That's the beginning of any entrepreneurial journey. No one gets the idea to start a business and then makes six figures the next week. It takes a lot of time and effort and grit at the beginning, and most importantly, it takes a lot of vision. You have to know what you're working for and why you're doing it because the short-term gratification just isn't going to be there. You're going to work endless hours and have very little to show for it at the beginning, but you have to keep working and learning and growing and evolving in order to see the big picture profits without the nonstop work grind. It took me a few years to get my first online business rolling like a well-oiled machine. The beginning was so hard and I was working the most hours I've ever worked for the least amount of income I've ever earned. (laughs) But then it flipped. I learned the business. I learned marketing. I learned social media. I learned systems. I began to outsource. And now I make a lot of money doing a heck of a lot less than I was doing at the beginning. And I always knew that this would happen if I stayed the course. I knew that the short-term sacrifices at the beginning would undoubtedly pay off. Now, when I launched my second business, I had already logged five years in the online business world. So I had much faster success the second time around, and it was almost effortless to get that second business off the ground. But there's so much that went on behind the scenes that no one saw. So yeah, I can sit here and say, I had a $20,000 course launch with my first course. This is in my second business. And that's great. But it took eight months of me creating the course, putting in endless hours where I was earning $0 off of all that time. And so at the beginning, you have to be willing to put in time without the the uh, reward right away. So today's podcast isn't necessarily about the very beginning stages of entrepreneurship. Yes, everything I share today will absolutely help you newbies have faster success. I wish, wish I knew these things when I started. But I created this episode primarily for women who've been in business for a little while and are spinning their wheels, wondering why it's not working for them. So yes, this episode will help any business owner at any point of their business, but I'm really speaking to those of you who are already taking action and just need to refine your strategies. If you're a newbie, have that vision, keep grinding, and you will get there. Okay, so you're showing up to Instagram, you're posting something, you're using 30 hashtags, but you don't have people banging down your virtual door to get their hands on what you got. So I want you to do an honest gut check and a social media audit of the 10 mistakes I'm about to go through. So let's dive in. Mistake number one, you're not positioning yourself as a credible authority because you're just sharing pictures of your kids. Now, I get it. At the beginning, it's really hard to figure out what to post. So posting anything is better than posting nothing. So on a whim, you post a picture of your kids because you know you have to post something in order to be consistent. Then the next day, you post another picture of your kids because you're in a rush. 
and then the next day a picture of your dog and before you know it your top nine photos on Instagram are all random photos but you're telling yourself I'm showing up every day listen the reality is the more you make your social media a personal diary the less people are going to see you as an expert in your industry and in order for people to buy from you you need to be seen as a credible authority Now, if you're wondering how much to post of yourself versus your business, I always default to the 70-30 rule. 70% of my content is about business and 30% is about myself. So it's a good idea to look at your last nine photos on Instagram each week and ask yourself if you're posting enough content to establish yourself as an expert or as someone who knows their stuff. That leads us into mistake number two. You're not providing value to your audience. The fastest way to build that authority with your audience and get them from seeing you as some random girl or mom to seeing you as the go-to person in your industry is by providing value, such as free tips, tricks, mini lessons, tutorials, etc., The goal is to provide so much value for free that when you pitch your offer, your audience is like, "Uh, this is a no-brainer. I've learned so much from her already. I'm buying from her or I'm joining her, whatever it is. So if you're a realtor and you're posting about a house that sold in one day, how can you take it a step further from look at this house that sold in 24 hours to here are the five things that made this house so desirable that it sold in 24 hours? That's adding value. If you are a fitness coach, instead of just showing a picture of you and saying, did my workout today? Okay, well, good for you. No one really cares. Turn it into five tips for finding the motivation to work out when you have none. Adding value. If you are a makeup artist for brides, instead of just showcasing brides on your feed, share the before and after pictures. Explain how you hid her rosacea that she was so worried about. And do tutorials, like five-minute daily makeup tutorials, so that your potential brides are falling in love with your work, they're learning from you, they're trusting you, And they're seeing what you're capable of, not just a bunch of beautiful brides. So don't make your content self-serving. Make it audience serving and always ask yourself how you can take it a step further and provide some sort of free value in that post so people see you as an expert. Now let's move on to mistake number three. You're not clear on your ideal client avatar. This should be your first first step in business, getting super clear and laser focused on who you are you're trying to attract and work with. Now, if you skip this step, your marketing message will never reach anyone because you'll be too general and too vague. So your ideal client avatar is what I call ICA. You're going to hear me say ICA for short, but it is the, the person you ideally want to work with. Okay, so I was talking with a relative the other day and he creates video games and he asked me what the most important thing he should focus on when marketing marketing his games is. And I said, well, first, who is your ideal buyer? And he kind of looked at me confused and I said, well, what gender, what age, what other games do they play? What stores do they shop in? What's their socioeconomic status? What are their occupations? And he was mind blown. He was like, um, I don't think I've really ever thought about that. But you're right. If I knew those things, it would be so much easier to market my games to them. Now, I know how tempting it is to cast a wide net, to want to sell to everyone that has a pulse. But I guarantee that will not get you very far. So your first step is to get very clear on the exact person you want to work with. Now, of course, Not every person who buys from you or hires you will check off every box of your ideal client avatar, but they will most likely check off several of those boxes that you predetermine. So again, I have a whole course on this, 
But what you want to sit down and think is, okay, what's the gender? What's the age? What stores do they shop in? Um, What is their socioeconomic status? What brands do they buy? What activities do they do? What are their struggles? What are their dreams? What are their goals? All of those things. You want to get crystal clear on who it is you're trying to attract and who you want to work with. Who is that ideal client for you? Now, this leads us to mistake number four, which is... You don't know your ideal client avatar's struggles, pain points, and dreams. So the number one way to reach your ICA is by hitting her in the heart and in the gut. You want to get inside her head and figure out what her struggles are, what keeps her up at night, what she's desperate to change, what she wants, what her dreams are. Now, women make purchases based on emotion. So if you can create a post and have your ICA say, oh my gosh, you're in my head. This hits me so hard. Boom, you will make that sale or sign that client. And now I want you to realize there's a big difference between wanting a six pack and wanting to be able to button your pants without having to lay down. So you need to know which one speaks to your ICA. So this example is for you fitness people. So if a fitness coach was talking about getting a six pack, and looking ripped and shredded. I personally would keep scrolling because that's not a desire of mine at all. But if I saw another fitness coach talking about being able to slide into my pants without breaking a nail trying to pull them up, not having to do squats and lunges while wearing said pants in order for them to fit, and still enjoying cake, uh, yeah, that's me. I am that coach's ICA. So if the first coach was trying to recruit me and was posting about getting ripped and shredded and following a carb cycling meal plan, she would definitely not be getting my money. I am not her ideal client avatar. I'm not her ideal client. So you don't want to be too general in lose weight or have more energy or feel more confident. Those things are too general and everyone will think, oh no, that doesn't apply to me. You want to be super specific so that you are speaking to the right person. When they read your post, they will know you are the one for them. For example, that second fitness coach about not breaking a nail while trying to get my pants on. Yes, if you were to write that, I would totally sign up with you or message you and say, okay, give me the deeds. I need this. So that's why it's so important to have a really, really laser focused, clear vision of your ICA what her struggles are, and what her goals are. So take that example, the fitness example, apply it to whatever industry you are in. Because that takes us right into mistake number five. You are not creating content that solves your ICA's problems. So remember number two, providing value. You're not providing value. This is where that really comes into play. So knowing your ICA's problems is one thing, but actually creating content that speaks to their needs is another thing. So if you're struggling with what content to create, poll your audience. Use the polls and the question box features in your stories. Ask for feedback. Um, Ask for people to tell you what they're struggling with in your posts. Have them say, you know, you could easily say comment below or DM me. You can send out surveys. You could personally DM people and say, hey, I'm working on a little project. I'd love your input. Or you can ask your potential clients to hop on 15-minute calls with you so that you can actually talk to them. The key is to getting them to um, give you their words. So you want to avoid yes or no questions and instead you want to use open-ended questions so that they will use their own language to tell you what their problems are, what their struggles are. Because when you get them to tell you exactly what they're struggling with, it makes a world of difference. It makes content creation easy, right? You now have a list of your ICA's problems and you can create content based off of that list. You'll never be spinning your wheels thinking, hmm, what should I post today? Maybe I'll post another picture of my kids. 
And this helps the conversion process. Going from follower to customer, a no-brainer. Because when you're providing solutions to their problems in your posts and in your stories for free, you're giving that value, those tips, those tutorials, and then you pitch your offer, your ICA is like, oh my gosh, this girl has helped me so much already. I have to jump on this, whatever it may be. If you need help with this, I have the One Stop Shop solution. This episode is sponsored by my course, The Social Sales Content Bundle, and it's everything you need to nail your niche, identify your ideal client avatar, do market research, identify your content pillars, and craft posts and stories that draw the right people to you and then convert them from followers to customers. You get six exclusive video trainings and activities, 125 caption headlines, 105 caption calls to action, nine caption formulas, and more. So if you're interested in transforming your content and your sales skills, check out the show description for the link to the social sales content bundle. Now let's slide on in to mistake number six. You're not sharing social proof. Social proof includes testimonials, before and afters, client results, screenshots of messages telling you how amazing your product program offer is. Social proof is a great way to get people off the fence, to show them that real people are getting real results and that it's possible for them to. Always ask your customers or clients for feedback, ask for their transformations, and of course, get their permission to share those transformations, whether they're photos or testimonials with or without their names and pictures. Um, create a folder with these testimonies. This is so huge. I have a Google Drive folder and I upload all pictures, all screenshots that I receive. Um, And then I actually created a document in that folder. And so if I get an email that is pretty long and I don't really want to screenshot it, it has a bunch of other things in there that I don't necessarily want to put out there on social media, I'd have to really cross off a lot. I will just copy the testimony part or the feedback part or the results that they're sharing. I'll just copy those sentences and I will paste them into this Google Doc. So then anytime I need some social proof, I need testimonies, results, I go to that Google folder and I can access it on my phone, my iPad, my computer, and I have access to the photos that people have sent me, the screenshots I've taken, and that Google Doc with my own copied and pasted results and testimonies that I've received in on various platforms. Um, so So, so, so important to have that social proof. Now, let's dance on into mistake number seven. You're confusing your audience by posting about too many different things. I understand having a lot of passions and interests, but the more niched down you can get in your content and branding, the better. It's best to have five main posting topics or less. For example, if you are in a beauty network marketing business, you might post about skincare, hair care, makeup, braids, and your business opportunity. All of those topics align with your brand and your business. Now, if you're a mom and your ICA is also a mom, you can definitely post about motherhood. If you're obsessed with Disney and have Disney things all over your house, Disney might be one of the topics you use to attract other Disney fans. But the key is to always post with a purpose. Are you posting about motherhood because you want to be relatable to your audience and reach moms who don't yet follow you? Or are you just posting a picture of your kids to cross something off your to-do list? So always ask yourself, what is the thing I want to be known for? That should be apparent when a new person pops onto your page. If you're posting about seven, seven different topics in rotation, It's going to be really difficult for your ICA to know what you really offer if they stumble upon your page, if they happen to end up there. So be really clear and intentional about the things you are posting. Now, let's go into mistake number eight. You're not clearly communicating that there's something you offer, that people could buy from you, could join you, could hire you. It's just not clear. 
Now, I totally get not wanting to be salesy or annoying, but if people don't know that you offer something, you're never going to be successful. Now, no, you do not have to be blasting this in everyone's face, in every single post, but look at your last nine photos. Do they tell someone who is new to your page that you offer something? Is this clear in your bio? Do you have a highlight covering what you offer? How about a highlight with testimonials or results? There's that social proof. Are you mentioning and breadcrumbing what you offer in your stories? Each day in your stories, you should be showing a glimpse into your day. Have you working your business? Or you can highlight a testimonial or a client result. Or you can talk about your community and what's going on in there. You can brag about a client you're working with. And this doesn't have to be seven days a week, but you want to be consistently directing people to swipe up if you have 10,000 followers or head to the link in your bio to learn more or to apply or to join you, whatever it is, throughout the week. This is also where you want to be aware of your ICA's pain points and call them out so you get their attention. Then talk about the solution you provide, the results your customers, your clients have experienced. And then you invite them to learn more or to work with you. So this is why really knowing who it is you're trying to attract and what they're struggling with is so, so, so important. And here's a a really big tip is pretend, always pretend you are speaking to just one person not to hundreds or to thousands of people. Picture one person on the other side of that screen, whether you're talking to the camera in your stories or you're writing a post for your feed. Speak and write only for that one person. I promise you'll have so much more success with being specific and talking to one person instead of being super general and vague. So I want you to go back and do a social media audit If I were to stumble upon your page, would I know what you offer and who you work with? Do that little assignment. Next mistake, number nine. You're not building genuine relationships and engaging with others or talking to qualified leads in the DMs. Listen, the magic happens in the DMs. It's where you can really build relationships with qualified leads and close sales. I am not a fan of cold messaging random people and asking them to join you or buy from you, but I am a fan of having natural, organic conversations with people, either by creating content that gets them to message you or you messaging them based on something you saw on their page. Now, DMs are also a great place to serve your audience. Ask any prospects what they're struggling with or they're working on. And then provide tips, resources, or things that might help them. Even articles or links to sites that they might like. And this doesn't have to be all about your business. So if you're in health and fitness and you're talking to someone in the DMs, yes, you can ask them what are you struggling with. And before you make that pitch, you can offer them free advice. You can say, hey, here's a free meal plan that I've created. Would you like it? Etc. Or you can talk about things that aren't related to your business. So for me, a lot of the relationships I built started with baby talk. We would talk about baby items or strollers. And then when I would find something that I knew that person would be interested in, maybe a lactation cookie recipe, right? I would send it to them. That wasn't about my business, but it was about something we had talked about. I knew that they were interested in. Building trust with people and being a real person is so important. So I love this little imaginary scenario. It's actually not that far-fetched. So imagine you were dropping your kid off at the first day of preschool, first day. You wouldn't walk up to every single mom there and say, hey girl, I love your style. Want to join my team or buy my product? Can you imagine what the other moms would do? They would push their kids into that classroom so fast and make a mad dash to their cars to avoid you. But... You would start small talk. You would say to another mom, I love your bag. I've been looking for one big enough to carry all my stuff. How do you like that one? I've been considering that brand. 
you would start to build real relationships with those other moms. You would get to know them a little bit before you started pitching them on your products and services, right? So do that online too. Don't be the person people run from. Talk to others like you would talk to them in real life and build those relationships. And as you continue posting and adding value, those DMs will naturally lead to them saying, so I've been seeing your posts and I think I I want more info. Or you can extend that hand and say, hey, not sure if you saw my last post, but I'm hosting a free challenge and I think you'd be a great fit and rock it. Can I send you more info? It will be so much easier and those messages will be so much more well received after you've been talking to someone than if you just send cold invites and cold messages. So be a real human, be normal in the DMs. And lastly, mistake number 10. Your mindset is all wrong and you're too caught up in the comparison game. I honestly believe that you need more mindset work than you need strategy work. Because if your mindset is all wrong, if you're constantly telling yourself you're not good enough, not creative enough, that it's taking you too long, that you should be further along, that you'll never get there, if your spouse isn't supportive and your family and friends are questioning you and making fun of you, you could have all the strategy in the world, but your self-doubt, your self-questioning, will be a major roadblock to your success. Now, it's so easy to get caught up in the comparison game and see someone else slaying it while you're struggling. To see someone who started after you, making more than you. To get caught up in the vanity metrics of so-and-so is getting more likes than me. And you might fall victim to imposter syndrome. But I want you to know that this is all normal. And you are not alone. When I first started my online business, my husband told me I'd embarrass us and never stick with it. My friends literally made fun of me and my family kept asking why in the world would I waste my education and give up my safe salary to build an online business. I kept looking at others who were having faster success. I kept wondering how long I could fake it until I make it. But the one thing I had was confidence in myself and an unwavering work ethic. I told myself, no one believes in me, but I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to be wildly successful, and then I'm going to rub it in their faces and say, I told you so. And I kept reminding myself that slow and steady wins the race. This is a marathon, not a sprint. And that I wasn't faking it, that I did have value to share with others. And I constantly listened to audiobooks and podcasts. I still do. Because I knew my income would only grow as much as I grew as a person and a professional. So I applaud you for listening to this right now. But I want you to put your blinders on. To stop comparing yourself to others. To stop comparing your chapter 3 to someone else's chapter 33. I want you to believe in yourself and know the only way to fail is to quit. I want you to live in the abundance mindset, knowing that there is enough money and opportunity out there for everyone instead of the scarcity mindset where you believe there are only so many clients, so many opportunities, there's not enough money out there. And instead of listening to your family and your friends who are doubting you, listen to your heart. You are capable. You can do this. And you don't need anyone else to believe in you but yourself. So focus on believing in yourself, visualizing the future you want, and serving your audience. And then everything else will fall into place. So to recap, the 10 mistakes you might be making that are causing you to work really, really hard but not see the results are number one, you're not positioning yourself as a credible authority because you're just sharing pictures of your kids or whatever you feel like posting. Mistake number two, you're not providing value to your audience. So get out there, provide those free tips, tricks, mini lessons, etc. Mistake number three, you're not clear on your ideal client avatar. So really hone in on who it is you're trying to attract and work with. Mistake number four, you don't know your ideal client avatar struggles, pain points, and dreams. 
So this is where you need to get out there and you need to start asking so that you have a very clear picture of what you should be talking about. Mistake number five is you're not creating content that solves your ICA's problems. So again, that goes back to the last one. Get out there, ask. Ask what their problems are, their pain points are, what are they struggling with? And then create content that goes back to number two, providing value, free tips, free tricks, free mini lessons. Mistake number six is you're not sharing social proof. So start collecting those testimonials, before and afters, client results, take screenshots, create your Google folder. Mistake number seven, you're confusing your audience by posting about too many different things. So get really clear on what it is you want to be known for and make sure that everything you post is through that lens. Mistake number eight, you're not clearly communicating what you offer that people could buy from you or could join from you. So get comfortable with breadcrumbing that, with mentioning it, with doing stories where you provide value and then you pitch at the end and tell people, hey, I have a new group starting or I'm opening a new mentorship or hey, the cart is now open, swipe up or head to the link in my bio to join me or buy from me or snag this or get info on my mentorship, whatever it may be. Mistake number nine, you're not building genuine relationships by engaging with others or talking to qualified leads in the DMs. So do not be afraid of your DMs. Use your DMs as your place to really nurture your audience, your prospects, those qualified leads. Talk to them like a real human. Provide resources, trainings, tips, whatever you can to help them, and then you will sell them. And then lastly, mistake number 10 is your mindset is all wrong and you're caught up in the comparison game. So put your blinders on, believe in yourself, do all the personal development you need to do, but just get out there and crush it as you work on your mindset just as much, if not more, than you work on your skills and strategies. And that is a wrap. I hope you found this episode helpful. I'd love for you to take a screenshot, tag me, tell me what you thought of the episode, and then go out there and make those money moves. Thank you so much for listening, and I will catch you on the next episode.